Hi folks, I'm John with a pain care clinic where we teach people how to cure their chronic pain. And much of that teaching comes from Dr. John Sarno. So this episode is about Dr. Sarno, who I owe my pain-free life to, and why and how this whole mind-body connection to chronic pain came to be. The doctor's story is a hero's journey and a pretty remarkable one as well. Sarno was born in 1923 in Brooklyn, New York. His father was a blue collar printing press worker and his mother was a homemaker. He went to college but left before graduating to serve in field hospitals during World War II. He must have liked it because upon returning he received a medical degree from Columbia University. That was in 1950. But it wasn't until he joined New York University's Rusk Institute for Rehabilitation Medicine in 1965 that he started identifying problems with the way medicine was addressing chronic pain. Specifically, he noticed that the protocols were just not working, patients weren't getting better. The doctor was a natural problem solver, which isn't encouraged in medical school, so he attempted to solve the problems that he saw in front of him directly every day. Dr. Sarno was the director of the Rusk Institute for 10 years, but was demoted after publishing his first book, Healing Back Pain, which sold millions of copies. Sarno had actually written the book many years prior to publishing it, but wanted to wait until he had university tenure to publish it for fear of being fired. With tenure, you can't be fired. However, when he did finally publish Healing Back Pain, the hospital banished him to the basement where he continued to practice medicine by himself pretty much for the next 40 years. All the while, he was publishing best-selling books, curing tens of thousands of people, and becoming moderately famous in his own right. Howard Stern even dedicated his autobiography to Dr. Sarno, who he considered a close friend. Larry David of Seinfeld fame said the treatment by Sarno was the closest thing that he ever had to a religious experience and it cured his chronic pain. And the list of Sarno supporters and celebrities goes on and on. Over time, the doctor expanded his TMS diagnosis to include almost all forms of chronic illness, from IBS to tinnitus to fibromyalgia, and even rheumatoid arthritis. Sarno's ideas would have completely revolutionized treatment for all chronic illness for the better, if not for his biggest detractor, the medical establishment themselves. They wanted no part of it and no part of Sarno either. In fact, Eric Sherman, a psychotherapist who worked with Sarno, recalled in his New York Times obituary that colleagues would belittle Sarno in the hospital cafeteria where he would usually sit alone. However, they would visit him privately for their own chronic conditions. Also, New York University Hospital didn't allow patient referrals to Sarno. He never got one referral from other physicians within his own hospital. The problem was that Dr. Sarno was successfully curing people without medical treatment, and that didn't go over well. A clinical study done in 1987 of only Dr. Sarno's herniated disc patients showed that 88% of them were pain-free one to three years after TMS treatment. That's a much better batting average than surgery or really any traditional medical treatment. You might think they'd start using Sarno's treatment, but they didn't, and here's why. A new Porsche 911 can run close to $150,000 these days, and the number one purchaser of these fine automobiles are orthopedic surgeons, you know, the guys who do the disc surgery. So let's put this into context to help you better understand why Sarno had to be banished to that basement. If, say, the medical community decided today to embrace the idea that chronic illness is primarily a psychological issue, it would mean a loss of hundreds of thousands, maybe even a million healthcare jobs in close to a trillion dollars 
in healthcare revenue. That clearly would not be good for business and it's never going to happen. A great documentary about the life of Dr. John Sarno came out in 2017 and fortunately he was able to see it right before he passed away at 93 years old. I highly recommend the documentary. I loved it but the scene that really got to me was when they were filming his last day at the hospital before retirement. He was 88 years old then. He was clearly frustrated that he hadn't been able to change the system and as someone who's tried in a very small way to pick up that baton, I can understand it's not easy. But on the other hand, the highlight of the documentary, or at least one of them, was when his daughter talked about the fact that they couldn't go traveling anywhere in the world without someone recognizing him and thanking him. Dr. Sarno did make a huge impact, whether he realized it or not. He did, and his legacy continues on, and we hear from people all over the world who are still reading his books and still getting better every single day. Five years ago, I couldn't run 50 feet I was in so much pain. Fast forward to three months ago and I was standing at the starting line of the Vietnam Mountain Marathon feeling really, really good and I thought to myself, where would I be right now if I hadn't picked up that Sarno book that day? Well, not here, definitely not here. Thanks, Dr. Sarno.